so much for joining me this evening. Um, I'm the person that's at the helm for this evening, but like anything in life, anything really good in architecture is very much a team effort. And um, I've only been one small cog in the wheel on the creation of this um, New Pest Earth book. And um, I'm delighted that a couple of the people who have been involved as well with me uh, are here this evening from Yale University Press. And um, uh, it's been a wonderful adventure to be able to take my camera around the county. Um, I know that talking to an audience like this, there will are bound to be people in the audience tonight who have worked on some of the buildings that I have only had the pleasure of spending a day or two in front of with my camera. So um, certainly I've said to, to Mick and to Joshua, um, you know, if people have commentary that's meaningful or questions or something they want to counter me on or challenge me on or and endorse the things that I found in those places then um, you know it will really enrich the conversation tonight I'm really happy to to hear about those things um, and, and that we share them together so without further ado let's have a look at Nottinghamshire in fact I might even take my cardigan off so um, there we go i'm in my office tonight you can see behind me a few tools of the trade there's a scanner behind there i've been scanning some old old film stuff recently um this is an angle aspect of nottingham that probably you don't see so so much we've got a really green city um and i'm always looking for interesting places where we can see our city um, and that view is from up in um, I was up in Colic Woods looking looking from the east to the west and it's nice you, you don't often notice St Mary's and St Peter's and Wollaston Hall and the castle and the windmill all in one view. Um, so what's Pevsner about then? For those that aren't super familiar with Pevsner uh, as a title. Uh, I've titled this slide as Legacy. It really, really is. Um, Pevsner came, came to um, England from Germany as an emigre in the 1930s and um, was immediately involved with the architectural press and writing for the AR from the mid 30s onwards. Um, but really, we best know him not for his short articles, but, but the big major volumes that he did in his series about architecture. Um, and he was trying to challenge the concept that architecture was really for a very small band of elite people who were highly educated in, in the subject and wanted to take our incredible legacy of buildings out to um, the public, really. Um, and um, that's what he did. He, by himself, he wrote a total of 32 of the titles, a further 10 as collaborations. And, um, and then after him, there were a further four titles in the original series. First, they were confined to England, but eventually they expanded. And um, I certainly think that if anybody here owns a full collection, then you pretty much need a whole side of a room to put them because that's a fair number of books. Um, so Nottinghamshire as a title was a dear little thing that came out in 1951 and um, it makes me smile that the foreword it's dedicated to the driver who gave satisfaction which you know was that tea and sandwiches, um, was that just staying on the road without crashing into any cows or sheep or anything or was there more to that story than ever we shall know. Um, the original series was published by Penguin and Nottinghamshire was the second one up. The first one was Cornwall and certainly I've had a couple of conversations with um, people involved with the book. Well, why, why was Cornwall the first and why was Nottinghamshire the second? I think only Pevsner has the answer to that, but um, common folklore, as far as I'm aware, is on the basis that for everything that makes Cornwall atypical for this country, uh, Nottinghamshire is, is going to be far more uh, typifying 
what our country is about. Um, maybe that's true, maybe that's not true, um, but certainly we ended up being the second one. When it comes to the photographic aspect of this first book, uh, all I can find is this reference to Mr Duncan Gray. I probably ought to go and do a bit more digging. I don't actually know who Duncan Gray is, but um, his collection of images are rather beautiful in that early volume. Um, they're very clear and they certainly set the bar for how the books carried on rolling out in the way that they depicted our country's uh, architecture. Um, and the thing that becomes immediately apparent with this set of images um, that came to, 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 to typify what followed was that they were very pure. They had no context. And certainly when I'm working in the built environment, one of the really important things that I'm doing for, for, for you as clients, as architects, is to show the context of what you've designed and the way it relates to other buildings and their environment, their setting and their environment. This doesn't do it. So it's a very, very precise science. Um, the book got revised in 1979 and still to the driver who gave satisfaction and um, this time at the helm was Elizabeth Williamson who was not bookending what Pevsner wrote but very much developing in the same theme um, and looking at by then there had been uh, various losses of, of buildings through the 60s, there had been developments of new ones and she was a very, you know, sort of well uh, respected historian who, who contributed to a number of different things. Um, it was then reprinted again, um, but actually the, the reproductions in the um, 90s volume were quite a, a, a sorry paling to, to the first one in, in the way that they were reproduced um, and well didn't didn't really give give much give much to work away from the, the plate the, the canvas was blank. Uh, and so to our new title 2020 um, this time with Yale who um, I don't honestly know the time frame of when the series moved to Yale um, but um, the, the, certainly the current series of updates have all been by Yale and all very much honour what's gone before but put their own their own mark on on it um, and uh, good to know the driver's still mentioned together with Sally Salverson this time uh, you can see that the, the name, names have lengthened as a list on the cover and obviously Pevsner is, is <laughs> who could forget Pevsner and Elizabeth's contributions but this time the writer was Claire Hartwell who I had the most enormous pleasure of working with on this book and, um, and it's, it's turned into something far bigger. There are three names on the cover but but as I said, my opening gambit on this evening is that architecture is, by anything, a collaborative process. And this book has been a shared endeavour by many, many views, pens, um, a wealth of knowledge from certainly probably people who are present here tonight. The people you know most certainly have given their time and their effort to helping Claire shape this title um, and um, Claire herself attributes a lot of certainly what she was looking at within the city um, boundaries to the very very fine work that Elaine Harwood did with the city guide and that must be I'm trying to think probably 15 years ago now. Um, all of the people who, who Claire worked with are consulted um, I don't know, everybody's got a book in them probably. Um, and there's so much knowledge that won't have made it into this title that's out there. And I think everybody's own personal stories about the buildings in our county are so valuable. And that form of, of oral history needs documenting. And once stories go, they're lost. 
Um, so I don't know, that's just my personal, personal plea. And you can see how much the books have grown and this current new one, the, obviously the one on the right, um, is, 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 is a big, big uh, an increase on, on what was first talked about in 1951. Um, so originally designed as glove box guides um certainly you'll have trouble shutting the door on your glove box in your car if you try and put this one in it just about fits into a door pocket and um that and the derbyshire one uh we are now carrying around in our car and um lots of buildings locked though this year aren't there but hopefully that's uh, not going to be the case going forwards um there has been a trend to put two buildings from two different eras on the front and the back cover of the book and um, originally I think the main contender for the rear jacket was Boots D90, Skidmore Owings and Merrill. Um, but this picture of Jubilee Campus I sent down with the with you know with the, with, the, with, with everything else and I mean, almost immediately that was it that was going to be the back cover um, and as one of most the one of the more contemporary or most contemporary buildings in in the book uh, it seems a fine home for it with Hopkins work um, so that's great so that's the covers typical page spreads personal right from the beginning the photographs were in the middle of the book me using my hands as if I'm holding an actual book here um, and they sat in in the center as a sort of an insert black and white originally obviously and only coming to color with this current generation and the layout of them is is um, is from through history so earliest first there are two scene setters which show the topography of the county and uh, one of those scene setters was that very first shot I opened with uh, looking across at North Leverton Mill um, in this talk this evening and then they go through uh, in sequence in order of time with the most contemporary buildings being at the very end of the insertion really really helpfully laid out uh, you can see here for example plate number 96 um is is tells you who the architect is tells you the date of construction and you'll have to forgive me it then says page zero 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 under all of these on this screen and that's simply because i've lifted this from the pdf that i received when when yale was still doing the layouts um but in your your copy it will tell you uh to which page the entry refers to so if you're wanting to learn about the corn exchange then you can find it's on page uh, xyz my guess would be somewhere in the 600s but i'm only guessing this it goes without saying 2020 has been a beast of a year um, and it's not over yet is it um, so I think things that people were planning to say, things that people were planning to do, and more of that later, just simply haven't come to pass, which is tragic. Um, so there's been very little to date spoken about the book publicly, reviewed about the book. There just hasn't been the opportunity to do that. And we very sincerely hope that the voice will grow about the book as we go forwards and become to be recognised and valued as the important contribution it is. Um, but for of the couple of reviews that are now out there on the book, I was utterly astonished to learn that um, really the single most important improvement is my photos I don't think that's the case at all but you know I'll take that thank you if, if someone's gonna go there I'll take that that's a really really lovely thing and um, um, not that I've ever met Pete Smith but um, there's definitely a round on me for saying that very kind sentiment so um, but yeah, let's let's hope that more people start to talk about the book and then um, and Claire's incredible diligence and work and, and contribution is, is, is merited. So the main bones of this evening, what, what went into the photography? What's it all about? Uh, well, first of all, does anyone know where this is? Um, one of the joys of, of working on the book has been to be able to photograph things that I know and things that I knew well 
but also coming into context visually with things that I knew less of. Um, and certainly that I felt that traffic, <laughs> someone's just popped out, how do you manage to take so many traffic free pictures? Well, there's a story. Um, uh, but yes, the, the ability to come into contact with buildings that I didn't know so much in this county, and that's been one of the great adventures. Uh, something that's been really, really lovely is that I, being from Nottingham, knew about buildings that perhaps Claire hadn't encountered herself. And, and right from our early conversations, she, she was very clear, Martine, if you know of something that you think should be featured in the plates, please flag it up. And straight away I said, oh, the pyramids, the Ompton pyramids, which are out at towards Audsall, if you go north of Nottingham and head out on the A614, um, their, their nearest, nearest satellite for them would be Ollerton. And they're a pumping station uh, for Seven Trent and they're fabulous. So I, I very much wanted to get pyramids in the desert for this shot. Um, so I had to wait for the corn to ripen. <laughs> so let's, for those that don't know me or, or what my camera captures, um, a little bit of context. I'm an architectural photographer, true and true. Uh, that's my trade, that's my background. Um, I've been working uh, for 30 years in the industry and if I was in a room face to face with you all at this point, I'd be begging you to all shout, you can't possibly have been doing it for 30 years, Marty, you don't look old enough. But Maybe that's, that's not going to happen, that's wishful thinking. Um, today I also lecture at uh, Trent and uh, I'm involved with various other bodies talking to architects and teaching photography. So it's a really nice marriage of different things that I'm doing. But certainly historically and still now, the shop window for my work is definitely the journals and um, I wouldn't have got to wear I did or have with my career without having cut my, been lucky enough to cut my teeth, particularly with, with BAJ, with Architects Journal, um, who I worked for a huge amount in the 1990s and Architecture Today and the RIBA Journal. So a big thank you to those, those magazines for being my, um, my schooling really after my degree. Um, so, this new book has got colour jackets front and rear. There are 126 images in colour inside. I am guilty for all but seven of them. Um, five of stained glass, which I was completely up for doing, but they were already in place by the time I came on board. And they were, um, they were, they were shot by Chris Book from the University of Nottingham. And uh, I've put, see, I've put in brackets there, my occasional guide for climbing. So um, if you ever want to scale a church tower, Chris is your man, and it will be the most wonderful, fun experience to do that with him if you can tie him down. There are two others in there that uh, are neither from Chris or myself. Um, there were a couple of buildings that we were simply not permitted access to and trust me, Yale and Claire tried everything within their power to get me and my camera in front of um, I don't know why I put Welbeck Hall, that's supposed to be Welbeck Abbey, isn't it? That's, that's, that's uh, maybe very silly there. Um, uh, it, it just was, was a no. So those two images in the book have been brought in from a third party source. And um, I would imagine that, that you're able to immediately to see the difference. Uh, in, in them as, as being not quite in the same style. Um, I travel light, yes, I take all this junk with me um, and I can't carry it by myself. So the vast majority of the shoots done of the interiors for the new work, I had my um, fabulous husband with me, Paul Mottram. Um, we tend to go as a team uh, for a lot of, lot of photography because there is simply so much to do. And when it came comes to the lighting, uh, and the, and on one of the jobs, even even our son came with us and was helping hunt stuff around. So a true family endeavour at times. Uh, this is the A team, uh, as it were. So uh, Paul, my husband's the guy in the check shirt on the left. Chris Brook in the middle, and then Claire. And here we are at um, photographing the Scrope Monument at Langer, which you, I think I've 
put in the talk you will see in a bit. Um, they were they were great fun. The, the 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 shoots were always great fun. I have to say it's it's such a privilege to go under the banner of the Pevsner of the Pevsner banner. I mean, it, you know, it, it just goes out in front of you. It's the headlights on the car, and people recognise that word, and tea and biscuits will come out, doors get unlocked, and you're privy to some some wonderful wonderful uh, architecture as a result of it. It took over a thousand miles of driving to do the new work for the book, uh, which is crazy in a county that's not that that big, frankly. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very glad that I didn't do some of the bigger counties uh, in the series because goodness knows how many miles one would have to drive. Part of the problem or the challenge with Nottinghamshire, of course, is the Trent bisexes east to west and therefore by proxy north to south and really other than this end of the county the crossings are few and far between so there was a fair amount even though there weren't many inserts east of the Trent there was a fair amount of backtracking particularly in the north of the county just to, to get to a bridge so uh, that accounted for a fair few of the the miles and really the rest of it's following sunshine and access and that's what can really slow you down or, or, or build up the miles. Excuse me, I'm just going to turn the heater off in here. There we are and I'm back. Right, um, one of the things that I guess made it an obvious call to myself to work on this new volume was the fact that because I've been uh, working in the industry for the length of time I have and being based in this county is that whilst my archive contains thousands and thousands of images from all over Britain and further afield clearly there's a bedrock of, of existing archive material in this county and it made sense for Yale to call on that and for me to make that available uh, for use in the book. So there were a good chunk of images that were already here, already done um, and that needed little introduction but of course it goes without saying also that the reason that those images are in existence and is because I have been commissioned to do them either because they are brand new buildings in the case of things like Nottingham Contemporary or Maggie Centre or um, you know, various others or they have had money spent on them they have been restored and that's that's what brings my camera to these structures which meant that uh, the, the lion's share historically of the more rural buildings, the smaller buildings and buildings that haven't had recent patronage is where the gaps in my archive were. Um, and that's where the direction was of the new work. So luckily, happily, call it as you may, um, my way of seeing and recording of the buildings that already were in existence allowed for at least one frame in a set of photographs that matched into the, the typology, if you like, the visual typology that needed to um, be curated for Pevsner. And then the rest was down to um, new work. So here I am on location uh, for that scene setting shot which is the very first place in the book uh, looking across the valley towards our industry contemporary and in the past with the power generation um, and off I went off I went and um, yeah started on the new work which took place over a pretty much a six month period. Um, there was a lot of research at the front. Claire, bless her, had been doing a huge bedrock of work wherever she was going when she was writing about the buildings. If she knew that they were the ones that she was likely to want to include in the illustrations, she would have sown the seeds at that point by speaking to the owners and the occupants and saying, 
by the way, we'd love to put a plate in, in the book uh, for this. And, you know, at, at the time that, that it needs to happen, uh, someone will be in touch about accessing the property for interior slash exterior uh, image making. So some of those leads have gone a bit cold because obviously a book takes a long time to put together. Um, but the vast majority of people when when I was uh, given the contacts uh, and responded positively, oh yes, we remember that. Oh, we remember Claire, she appeared in the garden or she appeared here or <laughs> whatever. Um, and they, they were happy to facilitate. So day one of shooting on the, on the new work, this was the very first photograph I took. This is where the, the map took me right up to the north of the county. So February 2019 and um, North Weekly Manor um, or North Weekly Hall, which, which to me just simply belies its age. Um, I, I, I tend to be, my husband always gets me to play a game whenever we're going on our urban walks around Nottingham. How old's this house? How old's that church? How old's this? And I'm rarely more than a decade off on anything. Gosh, that's a sweeping claim, isn't it? But, but, but I, I usually know what I'm looking at, but I couldn't have dated this one at all. I really, really couldn't. But day one ended up being very typical of the encounters from a mixture of things that I was very aware of. Um, I either had seen on my, my driving through the county or knew about but just had not had the opportunity to shoot. Or I saw for the very first time, they simply didn't know they existed. A Milton Mausoleum's got to be one of them. I don't know if any of you have any, had any cause to encounter this exquisite little building um which is up near the a1 and um is just i don't know it looks like a hawks moor it looks like it should be in spitalfields not not on the edge of a, a tiny hamlet not far from the a1 in seemingly the middle of nowhere absolutely beautiful beautiful building and then from the sublime to the ridiculous the day one took me to clipston headstocks and just something that's listed that's that's extraordinary but how on earth do we quantify a new purpose for for it going forwards and and, and this is this is interesting i mean one of the um one of the buildings that very much we wanted in this volume was the horizon factory but but it didn't live long enough for that to happen and clipston is listed thank goodness but but <sighs> Who knows what's going to happen to it? Um, you know, it's, it's how does it have a viable future? And if so, in what guise? So invariably, whatever day I was shooting, whatever it was I was coming across, I was greeting each place with a mixture of, of either familiar, familiarity or joy at new discovery to thank goodness or aren't we lucky to, ooh, oh my goodness, what next? Um, I thought it would be useful to just put a few collections of buildings together under theme, running through them historically from oldest to newest, but just to give you a run around of some of the sort of places I was encountering. So let's have a look at houses. Home Pierpont Hall, absolutely beautiful, beautiful house, which luckily I, I know incredibly well because I've been fortunate enough to run uh, quite a lot of um, architectural photography days here. I've got a couple happening in 2021, all being well. Um, beautiful, beautiful house and still a home. And, and that was one of the nice things about the houses is is how much of our history is still actively lived in by families who care for it um uh, works up manor lodge mad crazy building it's so tall it's incredibly incredibly high and only one room wide um you know uh, smithson smithson extraordinary architect and yet this must be one of his quirkiest um pieces of work has been restored by the owners um an enormous labor of love uh, and its setting where it is it's within a stone's throw of some quite uh, industrial um buildings in, in, in on the perimeter of worksop and yet wow absolutely amazing 
had to really plan the timing of this shooting. This was early in the spring. I think this was my second jaunt out. Um, I was probably here early March and very much had to plan the shooting to time not just with the orientations of the building, the north, south, east, west, but very much into what was immediately around them. Um, mature buildings will invariably sit in mature landscapes and you can see the size of these trees very, very hard up against Works Up Manor Lodge. If I had not done the research and let the shooting for this particular building slip by three or four weeks, then that's it. You wouldn't have seen it. Um, you know, and as you can see, the trees, trees are really quite uh, in, in danger of obscuring the house anyway. So, so lots and lots of planning about when best to shoot these buildings when you'd either got great floral displays or simply nothing allowing you that canvas of being able to see what you needed to see. Thrumpton, another fine house in the county and with the most extraordinary staircase inside. Thrumpton unusual for having two plates in the book. Um, really the only building that gets, excuse me, glass of water, the only building that gets a big shout in terms of number of page devotion is obviously Subalminster. Um, really, even though as much as, as Claire and, and I and Yale would <laughs> love and so many uh, buildings merited more than one image, the, the constraints of space and cost very much dictated that no, it's one picture and one picture has to do. But I think other than Thrumpton, um, the only other building with an interior and an exterior is Newark Town Hall, um, more of that later, um, and, and obviously Southminster. So yeah, there's a stunning, stunning staircase at Thrumpton. Uh, another beautiful house right opposite the Minster is Cranfield House. I had a conversation with Claire and Chris on the basis of how on earth does one choose in Southern what to put in. There are so many fine um, residential buildings in, in Southern. There really, really are. But this is just exquisite. It's, it's almost like a doll's house, isn't it? It, it? You could just see it sitting in miniature and being a tiny little model with, with sorry, I'm going all girly and, and um, little girly, shall we say. But, but it, it's just um, enchanting, absolutely enchanting. Again, planning. Um, I don't like full frontal sun because it just slams into things and makes things feel very flat. But because of the mature trees around this house, the, there was no way of shooting other than a very small window between the shadow massing from the large mature tree on the right would then be met by another one to the left. So um, it, it was lots and lots of working out with a compass and these days luckily the, the pleasure of uh, Google Earth allowing me to look at stuff on Street View and plan in with, with satellites and compass. Budby, cracking, cracking little house that um, is out of sight in Budby up on a hill surrounded by woodland. But um, uh, as far as the story goes on this one, um, was built as a pleasure, a pleasure house for um, uh, thought, I think. Thorsby, would it have been Thorsby? Yes, Thorsby. Um, and um, uh, adjacent to a lake where allegedly they would have um, battles, pirate battles, and, and people making, um, I don't know what scale these models were of ships that apparently plied the waters of the lake whilst the owners and guests of Thorsby and their guests would stand up on the banqueting towers and direct the proceedings from up there after dinners in the evening. So is this tale true? I don't know, but certainly the owners of the house um, and, and from what Claire could find attest to this being the history of this rather unique property. So um, I have to say again, maturity of, of woodland around, you've got no sense when you were up there that there was any body of water anywhere near it. Can't see the lake at all. So, um, but, but it was there, apparently, in the distance. 
uh, from, from, from small and extraordinary to big and extraordinary. Kellum, um, really, really fine uh, example of high Victoriana, uh, as it were. Um, again, there was more to here to shoot than, than we could actually put in the book. And, and there, were, there, was, there were some compromises where we were meeting visual obstacles that as much as something deserved to be in the book, and for here I'm talking about the chapel that sits in the courtyard, if any of you know it at Kellam, from the, uh, with, with the, the dome 1930s Roman Catholic um, chapel, and, and, and that space just couldn't shoot it because it's permanently set out for weddings and uh, for public events with associated furniture and a big permanent marquee in the courtyard. No way we could shoot it at all. So, so reluctantly, Claire had to turn her attentions elsewhere with a different example of what she was she was wanting to talk about. But we still got the exterior here, which does look very fine. Um, Thorsby are um, Thorsby. Thorsby was fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And the team up at Thorsby, as you know, it's a Warner Hotel. Um, and to be able to access this space, which is one of the biggest volume spaces within the house, um, means that for a hotel, residential, 24-7, when on earth can one photograph it and not disturb the guests and moreover strip it back as much as possible to being able to see the furnishings, uh, oh sorry, the permanent architectural furnishings as opposed to the hotel furniture. And the only way around that was um, we had to shoot it at five o'clock in the morning. So this was, this was a shoot that I arranged for mid-June, fancy that. Um, so Paul and I got up when it was still dark, so that was half past three, four o'clock in the morning, drove up to um, Thorsby um, and took everything in while it was still, it wasn't, wasn't dawn when we got there, and, and just sort of stripped the space out to a more comfortable amount of furniture, shall we say, and um, um, set about lighting and of course the daylight then came but the residents were still in bed. I think I'd literally packed up the last box for us to take, put on the trolley and take back to the car uh, just as the first person came down for an early breakfast about seven-ish. So um, you know it was that sense of, of uh, being privy to something, it was, a, it was a secret. Nobody knew we were there. Nobody knew we'd done it. Um, and thanks to Thorsby, they let us pull the car right up, literally on the gravel outside the main um, the main uh, doors, which was wonderful because uh, we do take a lot of stuff around, as you have seen. The residential. Um, <laughs> We don't, don't have any contemporary houses illustrated in the book. There are plenty described. When Julia Marsh's house is described. Um, there's all sorts of, of homes described that are contemporary that Claire came across. But in terms of illustrations, the most contemporary residential is Cripps Hall, McMorrin and Whitby. Um, beautiful building. And I first photographed that um, for um, a, a book that I did with um, Professor Pisa Fawcett. Uh, from the architecture team at the University of Nottingham back in 1995, I think I did, did that book with him um, and fell in love with this fine, fine hall of residence, which I gather that McMorrin and Whitby based on the Ivy League universities in North America, to which they and the then VC had been to go and see as ways of designing for student residences. Um, it, it's, I really, really love Crips. It's beautiful, beautiful. And the interior spaces there are lovely. Anyway, I digress. Uh, right, so that was houses, um, some ecclesiastical stuff now. Um, and this is, I think, where the camera County really, really begins to shine in a way that there are untold, previously untold adventures. Um, there's a couple of tympaniums in the book and another one that didn't get in that I think should have got in, but anyway, um, uh, and that being the one on the Adams factory um, isn't in the book, but this is along with um, the one at, oh crikey, where's the other one? Um, 
near Carl Colston, village near Carl Colston, Hawksworth, Hawksworth, thank you, Martine. Right, uh, so this is Hoveringham, um, which you can't even really, you don't even really notice. It is high above the door in a very tight porch. It was virtually inaccessible to photograph um, from a practical point of view. We had really, really struggled to light it. We had to get the camera up very, very high in a tight, confined space. But oh, when our light picked it up, what an absolute jewel. It's such an early, early um, piece of stonework carving. Absolutely exquisite, absolutely wonderful. Southall, of course, a joy to do, an absolute treat. And I was lucky enough with um, Chris to take me up on the roof and went through the through um, where the clock is at the point it did its daily tune, which I wasn't even aware, since I don't live in Southern, that there is a daily tune, but watched it all do its magic. Absolutely beautiful. But the nicest thing of all, I said earlier on, that, that Pevsner is this set of headlights that come before you. Um, and, and you only need to utter that magic word and doors open. And in the case of Subtle, uh, as soon as they, they knew that, yes, okay, the photography was needed to do it at this juncture, they said immediately, right, we'll take all the furniture out for you. Okay, well, sounds great, thank you. You mean, you're gonna take it out, I don't have to take it out, and moreover, you're prepared to have it taken out. Yes, they said, you need to be able to see this building for what it is, and for that, we will take out the furniture. Wow, thank you. And doesn't it therefore shine? Don't you think it, it, it's a it's such an extraordinary space um so yes um and that that was the kind of thing um and again from from incredibly impressive early architecture on a grand scale to one of my favorite favorite churches which was all saints at west markham uh that and milson mausoleum just unsung heroes and um, this was one that wasn't <laughs> wasn't due to have a plate in the book at all externally. Um, this was a shot that I'd, I'd just fallen in love during the morning I was there and did it really for myself, but put it in the selection for Claire and Yale to see, who immediately said, oh, we need to put it in the book. I'd actually gone to photograph the font, which um, is... <sighs> Oh, isn't that just gorgeous? Um, it's so early, it's so incredibly early. And there is these little people standing around it, holding onto their Bibles, um, men and women of all ages. It's just stunning. Um, and I was given this enormous key. You can see I'm holding my hands. Yeah, I'm no exaggeration. This key was a good 12 inches long and weighed a ton. And, and just given this key by a lady in the village to go and unlock it and do what I needed to do. And there's, there's that sort of thing that you can't put a price on it, can you? That, that ability to just connect with something at your own pleasure. Uh, it, was, it was lovely. It was really, really lovely. St. Wilfred's at Marnham, deconsecrated church. Um, never never really had cause to to shoot anything like that before um made me very aware of uh in its purest form and stripped out other than the pews the the language of the architecture is 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 overtly ecclesiastical of course it is but without all those other things that go to make up the spirit of a church and, and the purpose of a church for whatever denomination, whatever religion, um, without those accessories, they feel those accessories, it feels very, very different. Our main problem, being a deconsecrated church, was there was no power, no power to it. Um, there was a key to unlock it and then that was it. So the lighting had to be completely self-sufficient. We had to run on battery lighting uh, and, and we needed a lot of it. There was no assistance. And churches are very, very contrasty spaces to, to shoot. Um, you know, you get light barreling, barreling through the windows and then lots of very gloomy corners and, and you, you have to work hard to create those three-dimensional stories um oh monuments lovely i will say australia yes i'm lying they got three plates in the book what am i thinking of yeah they outpunched thronkson and um newark Strelly, amazing absolutely amazing you see i'm full of superlatives aren't i um yeah, yeah 
lovely i can only urge you if you are seeing some of these things for the first time to pick up a copy of the book and go and explore and for everything i shot there must be so much more that is there that is just you know so worth looking at that you didn't make it in illustration wise um by the way if you have a look um john barton and his wife are lying on the top of this monument and underneath there's a rather spooky skeleton you can just see we've lit his rib cage so yeah there we are they were a bit gruesome in the old days weren't they and here's another example of gruesome this is the first six i think he had eight wives of sir jay's chavez clifton uh, why so many? What, what's the common denominator? It's you, Sir Gervais. What did he do to all these poor women? Um, and if that's a loving testimony to your wife, I'm glad I wasn't married to him. So, hmm, spooky. Um, St. Catherine's at Tevisel with its barley mow twist columns. Again, just beautiful. But the, the memory I take away from that isn't the architecture, it's the whopping great big hornet I am not kidding, look at that, that size hornet that we lifted out of that family pew. I have never seen an insect so big in this country in my life, it was terrifying. Um, St Mary at Edmonton, I thought I was in the Austrian Tyrol. Um, Paul and I were scratching our heads over this one. It's a very important church because it's a source of pilgrimage um, uh, and, and yeah it's, it's, it's a major church in terms of destination wow um, completely bonkers on the colour and the, the ornamentation um, Ninian and Compert that went, went, went several degrees um, and one of my favourite churches is one of the newest um and um and that was the good shepherd by gerald golan in woodthorpe um beautiful beautiful space and the stained glass in there is just so uh, powerful really really powerful working buildings um this is sibthorpe dovecote um, to me, dovecots are generally of the scale of the one featured in the book at Episton, which are small and modest and little working buildings associated with villages. This one is a whopper. It looks like the base of a really fucking great windmill. Um, and inside it, the, the, there must be hundreds and hundreds of, of, of dove holes there. Um, it, it was lovely. And to get into it, a half height doorway. I had to get on my hands and knees with the camera to get it through and in there. Southern Workhouse, beautiful, beautiful, elegant structure, needs no introduction, one of the more familiar ones. Boulevard Works, we now tragically have so few of these in Nottingham, and yet I grew up, they were on every corner, and I'm not that old. Um, uh, we're left with an alarmingly low number of these beautiful mills now. Obviously, finding a repurpose for them is, is hugely problematic. A good few have made their way into um, multiple residency student accommodation, but it's not been the case for a lot, and, and we've lost a lot, and I hope we don't lose any more i do worry about the ones in forest fields um but that's another story uh, another angle on the pyramids ompton david jenkins city architect Hornsey county architect uh, in the 60s um responsible for for those and my fields of corn <laughs> um d90 again absolutely monumental building um that and d d d10 at boots and um, D6 and the fire station by uh, Owen Williams. Really, really important buildings on this campus. Um, boots are custodians of some very fine pieces of architecture and, and we, need to be, we need to be mindful of that and make sure that they have a good future. Why are we talking to you about some of the photographic challenges that we had and the things that we had to come up with as, as, as 
outcomes in order to meet the needs of persona and I, and I very much say meet the needs of persona there is this really really set style of, of of seeing which is quite different to my normal way of visual articulation where I try and bring as much life as I can into the buildings that I'm photographing for my clients and I am involving people as much as possible to help tell the story of the life of a building and its purpose and its function and that's simply not how the Pevsner plates work at all and um, there were a number of creative challenges that were set for me um, and and one of one of the major ones was always to do with accessibility the actual structure itself being architecture was of a certain scale and of course these buildings have outlived many other things around them many other elements around them and if you have a look at the plate from the 1951 book you'll see that um, the original photographer was able to move move himself back significantly from from this big mill um, and that's no longer possible if you if you drive drive through Beeston you've got the big Sainsbury's and then you've got a vets for pets um, and luckily enough they let me be in their car park and there I am on my car roof but I still couldn't get dead opposite the front door a lot of a lot of movement in camera architecturally to correct this perspective from where I was standing compared to where it appeared I was standing. So the two don't marry up in reality. Sometimes accessibility was simply to do with what I said about Welbeck Abbey. It was a no don't care if you're person it doesn't matter how bright your headlights are you can't come in. Um, Bunny Halls was one of those that that we weren't able to arrange access to. But actually, the, the, the move round in order to secure an image of that um, came from a far better aspect. So you can see here I'm on the roof of Bunny Church. To be in the grounds of Bunny Hall to see this extraordinary gable end by parking, um, it would have literally been above me like this. I wouldn't have been able to get back from it. And you kind of need to get back and, 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 and at a height that more or less matches that amazing detailing. So to be on the roof of Bunny Church, perfect workaround. Um, again, getting high, this is, this is the doom paint, part of the doom paintings in the Priory Church at Blythe. And I didn't realise that we had any doom paintings in County, to be honest. I've seen the exquisite ones at Pickering um, and, and some other churches was, was familiar, but didn't, just didn't know we had any in Knotts. And um, Blythe is a very interesting building um, and this isn't even the nave, the nave is the other side of the, of the arcade. Um, but lots of challenges, A, to be able to, to get that high, we had to use the camera crane, the jib, um, and B, you can see um, that, that furniture is being cleared out of the way because Churches have to have a viability. Some of them now are using their spaces as community space if their congregations are small. They, have, they use them as cafes, all sorts of things. So um, Blythe's daily life is not just as a place of, of worship. It, it acts as a, a, as a centre for the village in all kinds of ways. Um, but obviously, we couldn't show it that way because we had to clear it all out. Uh, Newark Hall, Newark Town Hall by John Carr, the assembly room, absolutely exquisite, um, really, really beautiful. Again, quite problematic with lighting um, and, and you know, typical of, of so many spaces where you need to be able to show the lighting. And the reality was that, so um, which was too high contrast. So I had to very gently bounce light um, uh, which was quite hard, hard off the walls there because the walls were blue and if you shine lights at blue you're going to get blue come back at you so um, there you know you have to to light very subtly it hopefully doesn't look like that is particularly lit um, um, and that that's the objective to make something feel natural Sometimes you are faced with so much life, shall we say. <laughs> it's too much, it's too much. Um, and 
again in the need for crisp clean architectural design showing it as it is um you know apart from the contemporary well i say contemporary that's mid 20th century isn't it light fitting which i said to claire shall i take this out she said no leave it in but everything else had to come out there was so much in west stockwith that was um, connected with their daily operation and their services everything and this is typical of the sort of things we're having to do um, you know the view behind the camera of things piled up around Paul and I that we'd stripped out I mean that that shot uh, on the right hand side of screen there um, with all the stuff surrounding the monument if we go back uh, and the um, you know the memorial wreaths and the lectern and the piles of books and the candles and the Mary if you go back to well I'm going too far the wrong way uh, if you go back to that you can see we've had to clear it all out just to get that crisp and clean interior um, and again same with the uh, Scrope Monument at Langer um, I mean wow that's big it's really really big it's got its own side chapel um, it's it's a, a vast monument to care for no lighting on it and being in a side chapel and not in the main body of the church um, is, is basically a, a storage space for them so um, and at the point I said to Paul you know I really ought to take a photo of this I think we'd moved about 60 chairs by then already so um, to say that for each of the plates in the book was generally a one-shot wonder can you see how many days and days and days of photography it was taking to go to take all that lighting to strip stuff down clear it out light it shoot it and reinstate all of the things around it um you know it, it, a we needed a team in various places um and and b it was very time consuming and um not commercially viable in the conventional sense at all <laughs> but it needed to be done it needed to be done uh rolleston was another busy church um and claire was very keen that we stripped that back if we could so again we had rent a mob you can see the bottom right is how the church normally is it's very busy with its furnishings and its pews um and and we needed to be able to see the important detailing and the variety of detailing in the columns that that, that are on view at Rolleston. Oh one of my favourites. Um, and, um, and and I think I think tonight my 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 father is in the audience and um, he will enjoy seeing this because uh, he lived in Hickling. Uh, he and Jan lived in Hickling and um, but I don't think at the point they lived in Hickling any of us were aware of the uh, importance of the beaver angels uh, when I was a teenager I certainly didn't know them and the beaver angels there are a lot uh, in, in the Vale of Beaver the um, gosh how many did I read oh do you know if I say 30 that's wrong I think it was probably about 300 there's a lot but some are finer than others um, this particular uh, headstone as you can see has got um, relief work and inscription I mean absolutely exquisite but to create the, the photograph of it in order to see the indentations and the relief that required a really strong what we call key light from the side and again you can see that there are mature trees around the churchyard and being able to control that lighting you literally have probably 10 minutes at the most during the entire day where you get the relief in the way that you needed so we took lighting out and um and actually lit lit the gravestone in association with the sun that was also shining behind in other parts of the churchyard so a really really controlled look to something which would be natural um, so again typical things we're talking about representation here and and this is this controlled way of seeing is one of the things that i'm going to be exploring in the exhibition that i'm going to talk about shortly um, 
the reality of how we encounter our architecture is down to the time that we live in and the time we see it and clearly the vast majority of the buildings featured in this book were begun and existed in time spans far greater than our own and life continued to happen around them after they were built and um, You've seen the assembly rooms inside the town hall, a very fine piece of architecture by John Carr, and the face onto the market square in Newark is very recognisable and very well known. However, photographically, the reality is that. And that is not acceptable to travel into the book the book that has an anticipated lifespan of potentially another 40 years. These photographic plates will outlive my career, they will outlive me, they will outlive many of you before that book comes to print again. Um, and therefore, it's not possible to have these buildings bear witness to the single day in which they were captured for something with such a long lifespan so to remind you again that's what's gone in the book so as much as control on site which you've seen a lot of through the lighting the styling the tidying the cleaning the planning the preparation there was also when it came to the urban buildings an awful lot of post planning if you like that had to happen before the images could go down to Yale um, and you know it's 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 one of my assistants notably described our job at this point of polishing and and that is a necessity depending on context and certainly for this kind of context the polishing had to happen uh, in order to get back to what we do to all intents and purposes see as reality because this is these images aren't about being creative as creative photography they're about being a very faithful representation of what's there but again as much as we all might love a greg sausage roll or a vegan sausage roll or a festive mince meat slice or whatever it is they're offering tomorrow um that's not really how we want it to go in the book so you have a look now it's more subtle than what's been done on the building at 90 degrees to it in the marketplace um i the greg's has gone but have a look next door uh, to the right hand side the prudential they, they they've moved out they've locked up this boarded up you know a lot of stuff and you look at that pavement and the flagstones and you've just got to keep it still within the realms of reality on what you do i can't create something that feels so totally artificial that that's not what you see when you go to newark but i'm hoping that sense of Greg's occupancy of that building is potentially transitory. The building itself is the story and that outlives Greg's and all of us. Um, and that also buildings are cyclical. Older buildings, uh, particularly once they get to listed space, get to a point whereby they go through periods of, of love and then into lats and then into love again um, and those of you who are central to nottingham will be very familiar with watson fothergill's offices and seen that actually happen in a very short space of time so this is the reality at the moment it suffered very significant lorry damage about oh i'm wanting to say probably eight years ago so now where the um where the um uh, Oreo window was was very very badly damaged by a lorry um, swinging round and then backing into it. So you can see on the bottom left there are concrete bollards now that are permanently placed there to stop long vehicles swinging and hitting the building. Um, the building currently though is not occupied and you can see that the ground floor looks quite tatty and the building to the right of it there's a Natras Giles board on it. Can't, can't have that, can't have that. It's got to look as it probably will do again maybe another five years from now 10 years from now 15 years from now because they all if you see my hands they're all going through these buildings these cyclical periods in their history of, of use and reuse at least that's my ambition or my trust that that's what will happen to these buildings so i am literally 
trying to make these plates appear as when we go and see them, we see what we see, which is the architecture, and not necessarily the visual clutter that that Tuesday afternoon brought it, or that decade in history brought it. Um, and, and of course, you know, one of the biggest challenges was always going to be the council house uh, on that score. Um, and even then, I couldn't quite get rid of everything. Um, you have to, when you're working in Photoshop to rectify stuff, you can only take material from somewhere where it exists to put it somewhere else. It's hard to fabricate. Maybe we could have gone to CGI people, but even so, um, uh, the, the, the shot on the right is hopefully representative enough of what's there um, um, without too many distractions. But, but this was about as, as good as it was possible to get in a, in a convincing way because of the, the work that's always happening in the market square. The final challenge was one that none of us could have predicted uh, in, in the getting of this book from its inception through to its completion. Um, and um, the, the challenge um, has been COVID and has affected our lives in so many obviously um, you know, recognisable ways and a very small casualty from a personal perspective was something that was supposed to have been a really, really nice outcome um, connected to, to the publication of the book. And that was there should have been a 10 week show at Lakeside um, Art Centre in Nottingham, um, uh, championed by the University of Nottingham, thank you, who were, um, who are the main uh, sponsors of the exhibition that I now trust will take place next summer um, because certainly somebody's put Tony Pearson's put uh, I'm enjoying seeing these these images on my screen is there any way and obviously they're small in the book of seeing them any bigger and the answer is is yes um, all being well you will see two-thirds of them in a gallery context next summer the show is already printed so you can see the scale of some of the images there um, and um, it's now framed and in storage uh, at Lakeside it's 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 very close to the walls it's going to hang on and we just have to hope that what I trust I've shared with you this evening is the most extraordinary variety of wonderful, wonderful buildings in our city and in our county that deserve to have a wider public forum. Um, and um, I'd really love to think that, uh, that, that I and Claire and the team from Yale and Lakeside and the University of Nottingham can um, you know, enjoy with you next summer. So that's the story to be continued and I hope at that point actually the book itself can have finally the launch it deserves in that very public way because there were, trust me, there was all sorts planned for this summer. The book was originally due out in June, not September. There was going to be a big launch. Um, my show was due to open three days after that. Um, you know, it would have had a lot of media coverage and it would have given, you know, put, put Nottinghamshire where it deserves to be, properly on the map, as a, in the buildings of England. So there we go, that's, that's, that's the story. Um, and I hope it was um, an interesting one. Thank you very much, Martin. That was that was fascinating um, to to nip around the county in, in an only an hour. That's um, or, or thereabouts. Um, that was great. Um, I think if anyone does have any questions, uh, by all means, put them into the the Q and A panel, and we can we can work our way through them. Um, if I might start with one of my own, if that's okay. Um, you, I guess. I'd, from a more um, architectural photography kind of nerdy angle, um, do you do you find any challenges in in the different types of buildings? For, or do you are you able to approach them in a, in a similar manner? In the planning 
is is more or less the same regardless of the the style or the the origin of the building um in terms of well, for example you know neo-gothic 19th century church compared to a modernist 20th century one is is there a significant things that you are aware of that are going to be you know on your to-do list for one and not the other um i guess one comes to mind is the the interior um light uh, uh, elements um, or are they simply you know an object in space that you can kind of it's the same set of tick lists on your on your to-do list for one and, and the other um I, I think i think that sort of goes goes not just to personal but really everything that i'm asked to photograph it doesn't matter whether it's a, um, a residential a small residential dwelling or something as big as a, a cathedral or an industrial building or a hotel or a hospital the the the, the main challenges are always concerning the light once you once you've got through the access issues and um, that is today in itself a, a major challenge um i don't mean today as in covid i mean today generally in the sense of um people allowing access to buildings and therefore people too um uh, it's about the light it's about the light and sometimes they are the, the issues because things can be very much deadline driven um uh you know a, a lot of what i shoot is for awards and there will be deadlines that are are not movable um and you then might be working at times that feel wrong for it uh, each individual structure so it's the, it's the same set of issues to to work for the Pevsner challenge I had a long leeway I had a sit I had a good six to eight month window of of planning and then the same again for shooting which allowed me to navigate some of those challenges incredibly successfully such as the workshop manor lodge by timing that so the sun was high enough in the sky out of winter to be able to get the light on the whole house which is another thing to think about um, but not too deep into the year that 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 we had foliage on the trees one of the worst times of year is the time I wasn't shooting for Pevsner, which is the time we've just gone through, which is autumn, where you've got the low sun, you've got beautiful colour in the foliage, but I'm not there to shoot the foliage. You've then still got a low sun, but that density in the foliage is blocking the light reaching the building at all. So all the challenges are always the same, but they're always different because there will be some other differing feature, whether it's the time of year, the accessibility, the age of the building, the deadline coming in. Um, yeah. So I don't know um, everything and all, but that's part of the, the trade. That's that's what I'm there to do. Problem. Yeah, problem. <laughs> okay. Um, so another one I have is um, with only one, maybe two images uh, required or permitted per building. How many did you end up taking for each uh, building for to be a shortlist? Was there a target of say produce X amount of images? And we'll go from there or or was it always was the planning set out and go right i'm going to go for this angle and that's it yeah pretty much pretty mm -hmm. much there was um an element of whatever it was that claire had written about that this building was an example of so mm -hmm. it was um certain periods certain facades certain um elements that that there was no other options so it was a case of mapping the timing in to, to meet that criteria um the only building that got a more rounded coverage at all was Southall, um and um i probably overshot that by about only four frames simply in as in the sense of i'm here and that's fabulous and really it ought to be in to which yale would and claire would immediately say you're absolutely right but there isn't the space and now we've got to go back to the core list but um there were there were a couple of swaps and changes and there were a couple of buildings that weren't even on the list that i said look at this look at this we can't not and new at corn exchange was one of those that was not on the list at all um but it was the, it was the day i'd shot the governor's house and what else had i done um governor's house and i'd also done st mary's in in newark and the light was on the corn exchange and i thought you know what and this but that that's a building that doesn't have a future at the moment it's i think it's listed but it's been empty for a long time I, that is just such a fine fine 
um, a, a, you know, a fine facade. So, so stop the car and mm. go out and shot it. But mostly, I, I know exactly what was on my TTD list, and that's some of the material that's going to go in the exhibition yeah. will reveal that the shopping lists as they were. Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll keep quiet now, Nick, and uh, I'll let you uh, jump in. I'm just going to get my glass of water refilled. James, would you be an absolute angel and give me a nice big full glass of water, please? Thank you so much. Right, that's coming my way. Right, first, far away. First, firstly, Martin, fantastic energy. It was a very engaging conversation. The background WhatsApp chat from our committee are just saying how fantastic it is to have you again. Oh, uh, that's nice. And I think, you. I think, you know, it... it it could have been a subject that probably wasn't as engaging, but I think your your bubbliness and your personality really brought it to life. And I think the little anecdotes as well were were really nice. And seeing the behind the scenes, I think for me, I thought actually, I, you know, that's the kind of the mechanics you don't see. Yeah, you, know, you don't see all the chairs. And I remember the day of our wedding day for me and my wife. We went in and we looked, and there was just chairs and clutter everywhere. And we did the mm. same thing for the photographer. We were like, get it all out. <laughs> We live with so much visual clutter, don't we? Um, yeah. I'm ever doing retail work. The amount of merchandising in, in yeah. shops is so huge and you have to literally strip everything just to see the, the architecture and the design. Um, um, but in some ways, it's much better to have to take it out. It's very, very hard to create something if there's nothing there to create with. And this is one of the things yeah. I'm, um, I've just stalled on a job with a client who must think I'm a complete pain in the neck um but but I've stalled it for all the right reasons because there's not enough of a story to tell yet and, yeah. and it needs that narrative um so sometimes it's it's better to be able to have it all there and then try and get rid of it rather than struggling yeah. to, to to do something um I suppose I've got a question before we get into the the open Q&A um there are some questions that were kind of asked but I think you answered them through the course of the the evening's talk um, for me, I know when we did our Derby architecture celebration back in February this year, which, you know, seemed quite long ago, but also not at the same time, oh, uh, just before COVID hit us, um, you know, we had that conversation afterwards and we were amazed to find out how many of the photographs were used in the various presentations were actually by yourself. Um, <laughs> you know, and I think one of them you said was one of the last projects you ever shot on film. If I oh, yeah, right. that's right. Corbin House, Shed KM. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, my question is, you've mentioned that some of the photographs that were used were kind of from your own catalogues. Um, were all those digital or were some of them filmed? No, um, things like the Inland Revenue Centre, that was actually the, the shots that were in the Architectural Review in 1995. So, um, no, there are some older ones there. The only one that I reshot simply because I felt it was too elderly was um i photographed boots d10 in 1994 when it ran the europa nostra conservation um, medal just after it had God, i'm trying to think how many million was spent on it and i knew that i knew that that wasn't how the building felt now and i felt it it was so gleamingly sparkling in 1994 when I shot it for all the architectural press then that to paint exactly the same picture and yet I know I've talked about this cyclical nature of the buildings but but D10 is one on its own really um, that I did go back and reshoot it but then actually I ended up having to do a lot of post-production work to it to take it to somewhere of a halfway house between its gleamingness in the 90s and, and its its reality currently um, so there's not many in the book that are on film uh, oddly enough Reddington data center is one of those on film and yet that's a contemporary structure um, what else is on film there's a few things in there you can probably tell yeah yeah, I mean, I was always a, a big fan of 35 mil black and white because the blacks were just so rich. And I, I don't know whether you get that kind of richness with digital still. I mean, I've, I'm probably not fully up to date with cameras and things now. You know, I'm probably 10 years in the past. But um, there's, it, I'd imagine if you were to do that with film nowadays, it would have probably what made it exponentially more of a project. Uh, it? it would have been really, really tough. Plus also I, I, I shot on 54 transparency and per image was 25 pounds so i don't think that um yale would have loved 
<laughs> yes, yes, uh, I can see the. Uh, I know your best, might. Um, but yes, we are we are lucky that the costs now are in um, one's time and yeah. effort um, more than the, the the consumables which ran with film. Um, I'll tell you another one that was on film, and that's Nottingham Castle, because of course in 2019 it was entirely shrouded. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, the, and the plate that's in the book I shot from the roof of Newcastle House um, yeah. with the, the old Coates Viola building on Castle Boulevard uh, and I shot that oh the year they'd reinstated the wall after the landslip so oh landslip was 1995 so maybe about 2000 somewhere on there Mm. Fantastic. So um, I suppose before we go on to the questions, James McKay mentioned at the start, um, after you were talking about the, um, the opening credit in the original book, he says it was actually referring to his wife. Oh, the driver who did give satisfaction in so yeah. many ways. Oh, that's rather lovely. <laughs> Apparently. So I just thought I'd drop that in because I think he was keen for us to mention that. Uh, Good so one, James, you. if you're still with us, I hope I hope I've understood that correctly. <laughs> Brilliant. So I suppose the first question is from uh, John Peverley, and do apologise if I pronounce anyone's names wrong. Um, he said, "A wonderful talk. One thing you can't alter is the sunshine and the weather. How do you plan photography when the British weather is so unreliable?" Uh, you'll never meet a rich architectural photographer. <laughs> I don't know if you'll ever meet me. Not, not, not this side of the pond, anyway. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, I, if I have my time again, I would go and relocate to California or something. Um, just a lot of planning. Um, again, I suppose that's got easier. But truly, if they had a pound for every time they got the forecast wrong, I would be a millionaire and I wouldn't be working. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really frustrating. And even just in a county of Nottingham, you know, you can, you can get get up get up to the north of newark and the weather is completely different to what it's doing at home yeah. so it's 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 difficult yeah so have you ever have you had a situation where you've gone to shoot something and it's just the weather conditions have been so poor that you oh absolutely i mean i remember once um doing a job for architects journal and and having to uh it was i was doing a shopping center for aj in Bangor in North Wales and I ended up staying for five days and it was supposed to be a day, five days over the two-day shoot it was supposed to be and that was at my expense because there wasn't enough money in the kitty for it and the AJ had a deadline but they also had a budget and um and, and it was I'd stupidly said yes to a very long distance job and it would have cost me just as much to have come home and then gone back again. And uh, so, and every morning they said, sun's going to shine today. And you think, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, we, I think most of us have probably been on holiday to Wales and had the disappointing holidays. Um, so next question is from Ben Price, who's one of our committee members. Um, he's our social media secretary. He says, thank you for showing us all the amazing work. Very inspiring. So much so that I, and no doubt others, uh, would love to go out and take some architectural photos myself. Do you have any advice or general tips for the more amateur photographers amongst us on where to get started? Um, I think it's, it's about knowing your subject and you as an audience tonight know your subject. Um, it's, it's, and that's half the thing. Know what story you want to tell about that subject and where, what, where and what you want to do with those images. If you are simply making them for your own pleasure, then there are no rules. It's about making yourself happy. It's about ticking and scratching that itch, ticking that box. If your images are for another, then you need to work out and understand what their needs are and then work to match those. Um, Invariably with architecture, a lot of architecture happens beyond um, the, the, the open doors and a lot of the photographs that, that I take and others will take will end up in front of an audience who don't have the privilege to be able to go and go and see that for themselves. So very much with architectural photography, it is a case of clarity and communication. And that that is about um, uh, making sure that the scale feels right. So so in my case, I don't use wacky wide angles and go for, you know, kind of way sort of approaches because that's not going to help convey how it feels to be there. And I, and I am 
polishing. I don't, don't apologise for that. I'm trying to showcase everything to make it look as good as possible. But there's also, also to be that sense of reality that you have a feeling for something and think, oh, well, I, I genuinely understand what it means to be there. So really that empathy, Ben, that, that you doubtless already have will be conveyed in your images and then just go where the, where, where the camera takes you based on the, the knowledge you have of that subject. Be methodical, do plan your weather, Tripods are great because you're less likely to do that because you're thinking before you do that when something's anchored to a tripod. Um, keep your horizon straight. Yeah, we, myself and Josh um, are keen to do a little project for Derbyshire and some of the 20th century uh, bits and bobs there. But the lesser known things that we know from our own experiences or, you know, word of mouth and things like that. So uh, we may be in touch to just get some tips. <laughs> Go for it. No, that's fine. Often, often seeing something for, you know, when, when you've got insider knowledge, whether things you like, you might know a vantage point. I mean, certainly uh, that, that others don't experience that uh, early shot looking yeah. across the city when, when you and Joshua saw it at the beginning of the evening, you went, Oh my goodness, you, you don't normally see all those buildings in context with another, you know, Woolerton in the same view as St. Mary's in the same view as Greens Mill. And, and that's where well, we know our subject and we know where to shoot from. We'll know more interesting advantages and, and then you're taking something familiar to an audience you haven't seen it from that way before and that's really nice yeah no it, when you mentioned that it resonated with me because i've just finished the um the uh scheme for the former rushcliffe civic center on trent bridge and i ah, that was you it. was it it was what well i i can't take all the credit it was a team effort um but it was it well, you didn't ask me to pain. photograph it, Mick. It was more of a pain for me. Let's just put it that way. Um, and when you stand on the terrace there, you know, you can see every Nottingham landmark. Oh, the views are lovely. And I, I never realised that until, well, obviously, the first site visit we ever did. Um, and with that building, there was one chap left living in it on the very top floor. Mm -hmm. and, um, I mean, he held them to ransom to move out, but I can see why he wanted to stay. Yeah. And yes, that was when I realised how green Nottingham was. You know, as you say, you don't you don't appreciate that. Um, so the next question is from Linda McQueen. Um, she says, uh, no reader ever notices that the cars, people, street furniture are gone in the photos. It shows how much we see through that sort of thing in real life. And uh, Lin Linda's who I've been working with. Linda is from Yale. Thank you for coming. <laughs> you, uh, I hope I've not let the side down. <laughs> um, yeah, she's absolutely right. Um, uh, it's it's that sense of, uh, and that's why you know that 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 sort of before and after on Newark Town Hall is so, in some ways, so powerful um, because you just when you're there in three dimensions you see the building but when you're see it in two dimensions on a photograph god it's that bunting it's that that uh, all of that visual clutter that, that and i think partly that's the translation from experiencing something as three-dimensional and then seeing it as a two-dimensional form and and that's what makes it problematic so uh, i think she 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 would agree with me in that because she's been working with the images and she, she totally gets that I mean, I, I suppose uh, you probably got some closely guarded editing secrets, but I know, um, you know, Photoshop now has the content aware feature, which whenever I show my students, when we're kind of looking at putting textures and things into models at, at Trent, and uh, I say, oh, if you use this content aware feature, you can get the texture perfect. Um, I mean, what is the process of, you know, like the, 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 the building in Beeston where you had that, the issue with getting up close to it, what was the process in getting that shot? Oh, well, that, that was done in camera. That was done through perspective control lenses in camera. That wasn't Photoshop at all. Right, so it was done. I don't, I don't think Photoshop would be able to really solve that problem because the okay. reality was so extreme that if one is using computer software, then you're relying on algorithms to yeah. stretch certain pixels, constrict certain pixels, and then actually try and map data from elsewhere on an image. There wasn't a lot of that happened in any of these photographs at all. It is painstaking cloning, i.e. taking information from one part of the picture and really carefully pixel by pixel putting it elsewhere. So. Do you think that, that comes from because you're obviously when you started out it was all film and it was about that was how you approached it do you think that's where your 
measure twice cut once comes from definitely yeah yeah so <laughs> any of my any of my students or all those that come on my architectural photography courses get told that a lot measure twice cut once <laughs> yeah 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 no i've heard that quite a lot <laughs> um so uh, just i think that's the end of the questions but if anyone has any final questions please drop them in but we've just had an update from gary humphreys um i don't know if he was anything to do with the book at all but he actually mentions no the driver was pevsner himself having only recently passed his driving test after many attempts not was the only was the only the only volume in which he was not accompanied by his wife and apparently that's in oh. by susie harris okay well there we go um it this this is why this this evening was potentially going to be very revealing because people would know more than i and um you know i'll i'll take that gary and i'll carry the baton and run with it if that's if that's the story uh that's the story yeah thank you <laughs> i mean we did uh, we did have a question from james mckay in in the talk and he was saying about um, is there anywhere else to view these? Obviously, you've mentioned the exhibition, uh, but if anyone's keen on, you know, buying a print because it's a particularly fond building to them, is that something that could, you know, do, is there a facility in which you could buy a print? Uh, well, I, I, funny you should mention that. This isn't rehearsed, anyone. Um, uh, a lot of them are going to be available for sale after the exhibition because I do not have house room for 90 pictures. Um, and um, the University of Nottingham are having some, but there will be a good percentage available um, after the show so you know if people are interested then then just let me know i can tell you whether it's in the show whatever it is you're interested in and um how that might come about afterwards so everything's safely in storage at the moment all bubble wrapped and and yeah that's it fantastic hopefully tony sorry it was from tony pearson that comment so hopefully that's answered that so i suppose one thing we haven't covered we talked about um, the actual photography and the process of doing that but um, I know from you know working on film when I was at college the quality of the actual photograph when it's put onto the, the paper is a lot different to how digital is now and obviously megapixels and sensors and all that kind of stuff so was there any particular process in the printing of the images digitally to get the ultimate quality um, you know what was that process uh, not too difficult because I was working on an £11,000 Canon printer that was just flipping brilliant and yeah. um, faithful to what was coming off the screen that we'd already worked on and the files were optimum um quality shot in raw and tiff so um yeah i mean maybe maybe we have a conversation about this outside of him because probably <laughs> the audience are thinking oh wow, is this i mean i have seen the numbers start to drop <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> so i suppose we should probably draw this to a close so thank mm -hmm. you very much i don't know if josh has got any final comments to close out but um obviously for those that are new um to our events uh, please like subscribe we'll have this on our youtube channel so please share we have got another event, um, I think two events left this year. Uh, it's one of them's a live kind of drawing uh, workshop that we're doing with the Women in Architecture um, team. And it's uh, one of our committee colleagues, uh, Aisha Batool has arranged that one. So please do, um, do check out our other events, which we've got plans to, to do some more next year. Like I was saying to Martine before we actually started the event, we did, we did have some events, uh, some excursions planned, uh, which sadly we couldn't, we couldn't do because, you know, COVID-19 has ruined everything. Um, but we are trying to basically get our uh, excursion back to uh, Hall Axton Hall, which isn't open to the public. So hopefully that should happen next year at some point. Um, but as well, any ideas or any requests or anything, please do get in touch with us. Um, I think myself and Josh will be keen to try and do this kind of event, but for Derbyshire as well. So if we can get the Pevs and the Derbyshire um, talk going, um, we might need to speak to you, Martin, and get in touch with the Yale University Press team and see if we can strong arm them into doing something for Derbyshire. Because uh, I noticed that um, Robert Evans was on and, you know, he, he's a kind of a, a big Derbyshire architect and, you know, he's always waving the flag. So thank you again from myself and I'll pass it on to Josh. Yes, thank you. And um, certainly f uh, flying the flag for the, the Derbyshire half of uh, our
committee and 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 membership uh, myself uh, I'd, I'd certainly be keen on on seeing if we can deliver that um i don't think there's anything further for me to add other outside of what nick has already mentioned um obviously follow our social media feeds uh, to keep up to date we do have a uh, newsletter that we issue uh, when we are able to so you can sign up to that via our website and uh, you can uh, review and uh, look at our calendar for past and, and future events um, we do have a growing list for the spring so keep an eye out for when they're announced um, yes the first I think that's it really the first uh, uh, drawing uh, event is is next uh, wednesday on the 2nd of december uh, so uh but again every all the information is on the website um can i can i say thank you very much for inviting me can i say mm. thank you hugely to um yale for asking me to do the book for putting me to work with the most wonderful writer claire hartwell on on a project that is always a legacy project. I mean, Pevsna is just, oh, it's such a privilege to have been able to work on Pevsna. And, and to the people that have supported that photographic aspect and through to the exhibition. So Lakeside have just been amazing to work with. It's not gone up yet, but it will. The University of Nottingham themselves and the Estates team who, um, you know, unswavingly have, have supported um, uh, and understood the importance of, of Pevsner and its contribution and you know thank you to everybody here tonight who probably you know a, a few of you will have contributed directly to the information that went into curating the book um, there's so much expertise in our architectural um, you know individuals teams companies collectives historians everybody that we've got in county so um, thank you on behalf of Claire on behalf of Yale on behalf of Nottinghamshire and thank you to the society for having me back again it's great that that uh, I was the top bill of the year but it's been a funny year <laughs> it certainly has yes and, and I'll return thank you for to yourself for for agreeing to uh, join us it's been uh, it's been a privilege and, and a fascinating thank insight thank you very much wonderful okay right that's uh, well, it. I, yeah I think we'll leave it there thank you again to everyone who's joined us this evening and uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, at a future event Wonderful. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.